Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Big Apple Hockey. And it is exciting to be back and talking about hockey. Hopefully, we'll be able to talk some hockey. Uh, are we? Are we going to have the games this week? I mean, after all, that would be nice to actually see a game. I, of course, am Mark Williams, your host, and uh, just per perpetually under the weather. I have no idea what's going on with me. And I'm joined by the good, the bad, the ugly host, Mr. John Falkowski. Yeah, uh, welcome back to hockey. I, I feel like I should be walking into like some sort of doctor's office to get my fix for the Rangers hockey because it's been too long. No, no more cancellations, please. We already got a like. Yes. Thank All you. right, we got a like already. <laughs> and, and of course, fresh from the clinic to make sure that he's he's COVID negative, Mr. Anthony Laraco. <laughs> well, the Islanders aren't quite COVID free, but the uh, the game is on for tomorrow, and they were back on the ice today, so uh, we'll see them tomorrow take on the Sharks. Yeah, which is a good thing just to get back onto the ice because that is our lead story for this week. I still kind of laugh about it because. Anthony said a couple weeks ago, hey, why don't you talk more about the Islanders? We need to talk more about the Islanders, put them in the lead. Well, they've been the lead story the last three weeks. So the Islanders had two games postponed at the Rangers and at Philadelphia uh, due to the COVID protocol. They're going to be resuming their season tomorrow, hosting the San Jose Sharks, who just beat the New Jersey Devils 5-2. to two. Uh they have lost eight straight, the most under the Barry Trotz era. Been shut out three times. Uh, you know, I love to see goal differential as, as one of the stats. They're minus 20. And they're second to last in goals per game and last in goals scored. Anthony, got to go to you. What do the Islanders need to do to turn their season around? Um, string together and, like, you know, Four or five wins in a row. Get a uh, get some good mojo back. But um, first, the, the COVID issue. Um, you know, as you mentioned, the league finally did the right thing and postponed their games through the through the thirtieth, which was yesterday. Um, but looking back on it, um, the consensus is the league dropped the ball there. Um, I mean, I get I get playing the home opener at UBS Arena, but you know, the the day before the UBS Arena, Lee and Johnston went into COVID protocol. Um, which Bailey had already been in it for a couple of days prior before they left Florida. And then the day of the home opener, you're talking Beauvillier, Pellick, uh, and Green went into COVID protocol. Uh, and then the next day, Chara and Bellows. Um, and they just let them – they just continue to let them play the game against the Maple Leafs. Um, and they let them play the game against the the Rangers. Uh, you know, it, it just – in the game against the Penguins too. It, it just, it shouldn't, they shouldn't have took place. I think, you know, you're talking, you know, could have been three, three or four games that could have postponed. That's, you know, three, four less losses. Um, you know, at this point, you know, every point matters. So I think the league dropped the ball there uh, for sure. Um, and, you know, like I mentioned, they still have for tomorrow, Casey Zizekas is going to be unavailable. He's in COVID protocol. Um, and Kiefer Bellows and Zdeno Char are still in COVID protocol as well. But uh, thankfully, uh, Lee and Pellick, Bailey, Green, um, they're, all, they're all out of protocol and available for tomorrow. But, um, yeah, it's, it's been a disastrous stretch for them. Uh, you know, hopefully this, this break or hiatus uh, with some guys coming back will, you know, re-energize them. Um, but, yeah, they, they, need, they need to win some hockey games. Uh, and hopefully having Pellick back and Lee and Bailey, et cetera, um, you know, we'll, we'll help them out. Um, but I mean, look, Mark, you, you, you put some stats at the bottom there before, um, clearly none of them are good, but the one thing that I, you know, am, am you know, kind of, oh, I shouldn't say astonished by, but impressed by is that, um, you know, Ilya Sorokin has a 928 save percentage playing and playing behind this bad team right now. Um, you know, while Simeon Varlamov has a 0.881. Um, so that just goes to show, uh, you know, how good Ilya Sorokin has been, uh, that last game they played before they got shut down, they got shut out one, nothing by Pittsburgh. Um, you know, he was nothing short of spectacular, just the team couldn't give him any goal support. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's honestly quite ridiculous, but, um, you know, like I said, you know, they, they just need to win some games, get the good feeling back in the locker room, uh, give some belief there. 
but it all starts with one win. You you win tomorrow against San Jose, um, you know, and and you go from there. Like Trot said, this is a big hole they dug themselves, uh, but they got to get out one game at a time. And I was just gonna say that our playoffs are now. Um, you know, he's right. Uh, it's not insurmountable. I mean, look at the it, the Blues won the Stanley Cup, being the worst team in the league in January. Not saying that's gonna happen again, but the point is, um, there still is plenty of time where if they if they start winning hockey games now they can get back in the wild card race. Um, you know, they, they do have the talent to do so, but guys are going to get, got to get their heads out of their asses. I mean, Kyle Palmieri um, has one goal. Um, Zach Frise has no goals. Uh, Pajot, who I thought has been one of their best consistent players since acquired, um, hasn't looked right since, you know, he got injured in the conference final. Um you know, Matt Barzell needs to put up better numbers. Uh, it's really – you could go on and on. Really, the the only player, I would say, players is Pellick, who, you know, went out with COVID, and really Ilya Sorokin. I would say those are really their only two consistently good players the whole season. Um, Wallstrom was – looks like he was heading that direction in the beginning of the year, but he kind of – you know, he's like everyone else. He's, you know, snake bit right now. But – they just need all the guys pulling on the same rope. Also, Brock Nelson had a couple of games where he was showing. I should, yeah, I should have mentioned Brock Nelson. But, Brock Nelson right, I mean, has been has been really good before he got hurt. I mean, six of his goals came in two games, so yeah. that's that's something to also keep in mind. Um, Filk, is it just that simple? The Islanders just need to get healthy and be home to play games, and that's going to change things. I don't know. I, I mean. For a Barry Trotz team, I don't see the same attention to detail on defense and the same effort that I've seen in the three previous seasons under Barry Trotz right now. Um, I, I think it has something to do with the personnel. I, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that Nick Letty is is obviously not there anymore. That That's a solid top four defenseman. I know he isn't the defender he was, I would say, even four or five years ago but he's still a solid top four option for them. Uh, I would say that it's also missing Ryan Pollock, who's your probably your 1A, 1B defender, really your 2A guy. I know Adam Pollock's really a shutdown guy on that pairing, but Ryan Pollock is a guy that's also another heart and soul type guy. That pairing is the sum of its parts, like I've said for a while now, and they're one of the best pairings in the league. So when you take away one of those parts – you're going to drastically affect that pairing, which drastically affects that team in the way that its defense is set up. On top of that, like Anthony said, you're not getting goal scoring from Kyle Palmieri. And I know Islander fans don't want to hear this because he's gone. There's nothing you can do about it. But losing Jordan Eberle has really hurt. It really has. And I, like I said, it would. It, it, you're going you're gonna to take away a guy that's going to score you 20 to 25 goals and anywhere from 50 to 60 points a season. And he fit right in with Matt Barzell who looks like he's kind of lost out there to tell you the truth. Like he looks like he's passing. He look, he looks like he's trying to do too much to make plays to guys that really aren't in the right spots for him. Something's just not right with him. Something's not right with Palmieri. Nelson. I know he had nine goals, but like you said, six of them came in two games and Nelson was playing very well. I'm not, yes. not going to take anything away from Nelson. He was playing very well, but this team just clearly isn't the same team they were last year or the year before. And I, I think that they need a score. They need another defenseman. I think that they're going to have to make moves sooner than later. And I know Lou Lamorello has been very good and not overpaying, but if he wants to save this season, if I were him, I would look to make a move sooner than later. I know they have over 60 games left, but you don't want to waste time and you don't want to keep piling up losses. So make a move. Get, get the locker room morale back to where it should be in there, and the Islanders can probably then start stringing together. You know, even if you're not getting five wins in a row, let's just say you're winning four out of every five games from here on out. Now, that, that could get them into the playoffs, and that's what they need. They need to be consistent every night, and I haven't seen that. Anthony's right, though. Ilya Sorokin, <clears throat> if it's not for him, they are – they're behind Arizona if it's not for Ilya Sorokin. Yeah, that that's that's very alarming to think about because this is a team that I predicted to be in the Stanley Cup Finals, and yeah. um, just just I'm not trying to make Anthony or any other Islander feel bad right now, uh, or fan. I mean, but right now Michael Delzato's got two goals on the season, 
and Pajot won. Uh, Paul Mary won. He's got to be better. He'd be he'd be tied for Cal Clutterbuck on sixth for the Islanders. So um, they only have ten goal scorers on the season. That's not good either. They no. need to start getting the puck and putting it in the net. Yes, it could just be as simple as getting healthy. But by the way, this might be a blessing in disguise for the Islanders because now you're realizing Sebastian Ajo should be up. Um, uh, Robin Salo should be Robin in Salo's the lineup. Good. Every single night. What? Robin Salo's been good. I, I thought yeah. he was really good in the Penguins game. I thought his first game he was all right. But the Penguins game I thought he was pretty damn good in. Um, Ajo's been all right. But you know what? If you're If you're getting – if those two can go out there – and be not noticeable. Sometimes, as a defenseman, not being noticed and not and not showing up on the score sheets, sometimes it's just an indicator that you're doing your job properly. And sometimes that's more than enough, especially from two guys that don't have a lot of experience like them. So I, I, I've been impressed so far. Anthony, well, if you look at the next four games, um, I know Detroit's a much improved team this year, and, and even San Jose. Um, is, is, is Chicago, lot, six and four in their last yeah game. and even San Jose is a lot better than people expect them to be but um this four game stretch is something ho- they should be able to capitalize on because you know Chicago and Ottawa aren't good teams um you know and San Jose and Detroit while being you know much improved from last year they they should still be winnable games for the Islanders so this is a stretch here where they could really get themselves feeling good about themselves again so um, you know, this, this is their opportunity now. Um, like they just have to, if they could just hold the fort down until Brock Nelson comes back and probably, you know, hopefully two more weeks and then Ryan Pollock, maybe, maybe in another month, um, you know, and then go from there once they're fully healthy. But I think for now, um, you gotta, you gotta go with Ilya Sorokin. I mean, you look at Varlamos numbers and they just aren't there right now. Um, you know, I, I said on Twitter a couple of days ago, if Sorokin was playing for one of the better teams in the league right now, can you imagine how much better his numbers would be um, if he if he wasn't playing on a, a team that's underperforming right now? So you got to go with him, and you got to get you got to do something to get Matt Barzell going. I know due to COVID, a lot of players are unavailable, but Richard Ponick on the first line with Barzell the last couple of games isn't no. isn't going to help him get out no. of his funk. Um, and, and you know no. what? Maybe you go with Goloshev and see what you got. I mean, maybe it gives you a spark plug, something. Well, I, I you know, I, I thought um, last game he was definitely going to play with more guys in COVID, but he didn't. And then um, Brian Compton actually asked Trotz about it in the post game, um, and he said that Goli Shev, uh, he felt that he hasn't he hasn't proved he hasn't proved yet at this level. Well, he hasn't played an NHL game yet, so how do you expect him to prove anything if you don't play him? I mean, the guy's a twenty six year old veteran who played in the KHL which is the best league outside of the NHL and scored. And he was, and he was producing at the AHL level. So I don't, you're, you're going to play, you're going to play an AHL scrub of a journeyman and Andy Andreoff over than Anatoly Golishev when you need goals. I mean, what's the worst that can happen at that point? I, I don't understand it. And, and now that Lee and Bailey and all those guys are back, he's definitely not going to play now. So listen, for now, just Lee being back, but back with Barzell, uh, that's definitely better than Paddock. Um, but they need to try something. Put Wallstrom on the top line at Barzell. He needs to juggle the lines around um, and see if he can, you know, find some find some magic. Uh, look, I actually thought about this. You know, being that Seattle's very is a bad team right now, I wondered about if if Lou could like call up Seattle and and ask about reacquiring Jordan Eberle because Seattle's not going anywhere. Um, it can't it can't hurt to try. Uh, but because this chemistry is missing there, but um, look, they simply need to win hockey games uh, and do it now. So, um, you know, just before, I, before, before we even think about moving on to the next segment, I made this comparison. Um, the Islanders are basically Voltron and they need all the pieces to come together to form a, a mighty robot to, uh, take on the world or the monsters that are around them. Uh, I actually said it was first generation Voltron. It was a, I think it was 22 vehicles. That's to show how old I am. And uh, there's not just the five lions, but we'll just go with the five lions. That's the one everybody knows. But (laughs) I mean, I, and I think that's what happens when you lose a guy like say Jordan Everly or Nick Letty, like they were, they knew everybody knew their role. Everything was set. And then once everybody has to figure out what they're going to be, 
sometimes it just throws teams um, for a loop. And the funny part is we're going to cover that in a second with the Rangers. But... You know what? I, I actually, I just saw this one, and I want to bring this up because I, I want Anthony to address this. Lucas asks, at what point in the season, if it continues like this for the Isles, do they perhaps admit that the window is start or closed or starting to close and they start selling? Do you, can you see that? Well, actually, Arthur Staple, who I'm sure you guys know, is transitioning to the Rangers as well. He did an Isles mailbag today, and a lot of people ask him questions. That, you know, if it continues like this, could you see Lou selling? Um, and he basically said, you know, he doesn't. He doesn't think Lou is is even thinking like that right now. He said, "Yeah, by come February or March, um, if it looks like they're out of it, m- maybe he, you know, maybe he tries to sell a piece like Varlamov, um, Josh Bailey." But he said more so. He thinks those are off season moves. Um, so it doesn't seem like that the Islanders will be doing much selling, even if that does happen. Um, I think they they might view this as you know, for instance. The, the lightning after getting close around like 2014, 2015, there was the one year where they didn't make the playoffs and they kind of just retooled and they came back stronger the next year. So I think it's, if the Islanders ultimately don't make the playoffs, I think they're just going to chalk this up to just a bad year um, and then come back next year fresh and hope to get back to the level where they're at. You know, a lot of their guys are, are signed long-term have recently signed long-term like Paul Mary um, Pajot, they're not going anywhere. Brock Nelson shouldn't go anywhere. I mean, he's he's a fixture on this team. I was about to say, didn't he term. just sign? What? Didn't he just sign? He signed the first year after Lamorella was there. He re-signed. I was about to say, I know that he's got he's yeah. got a bunch of term left on his deal. Yeah. Yeah. So so basically they don't really have anybody to like Bailey Varlamov for the really only realistic cat uh, really realistic players that kind of like Staple mentioned, but he didn't really see that happening. He thinks Lou's just going to – he's going to see what happens here in the next couple of weeks, see if they can get back into it. Um, if they do, then he's going to look to buy. Um, but otherwise, he's, he's not going to be in a hurry to sell anybody off. Probably got some minor deals with Parise and Chara because uh, they're on expiring. I don't even know if anybody – I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. But, but I mean, they're talk, you're talking about, like, not that much of value. And uh, – but, yeah, per, uh Josh Bailey would be the one guy along with Varlamov. And by the way, hold on a minute. The phone's ringing. Yeah, Ken Holland. Yeah, we know you guys need a goaltender. Hold on a minute. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, but then again, he's like, oh, Ken Holland's going to say, oh, hold on. I got it off Chicago on the line. Oh, yeah. That's how much for Flurry. So that's what we're, we're dealing with yeah. on that. Mm-hmm. So what do you guys think about the Islanders? And do you think their playoffs start right now? And are they going to be – Starting a surge to get back into playoff contention starting tomorrow night versus the San Jose Sharks. Throw it all down in the comments below. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.